All right, so there's this guy, right? And his name's Christopher Clementine. And his dad died. And uh, he left him a bunch of money. And his dad always loved to watch fucking movies with him. They had such a blast watching movies. And when his dad died, he left him all this, all this money, right? And his life insurance policy. So he packed up everything that he had and he went to Hollywood. But when he was in Hollywood, all he tried to do was be the greatest fucking writer and movie director of all time. It wasn't so easy. He went all around fucking Hollywood and nobody liked his shit. They said he sucked. They said he was just ripping off Quentin Tarantino and all these motherfuckers, man. So you know what he did? He was walking home one day after getting shit on and he saw this guy named David Weinstein. And he said, hey, Weinstein. Weinstein was wearing a robe, had his dick out, flopping around eating a fucking donut. So he goes up to him and he's like, yo, man, I got this crazy idea for a movie, man. And he goes, get the fuck out of here, kid. And he freaks out, man. He goes home, and on his way home, he sees this super hot Australian chick. And this hot, uh, hot Australian chick, she, she lives in apartment 2B. Get it? 2B or not to be? Is it his love? I don't know, but he's too much of a pussy to talk to her. He's only got like two grand left because it's been 10 years since his dad died. And then he tells himself he's going to create something special, something amazing. Now everybody's telling him that, 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 that he can write, man. You know, they're saying, look, kid, you got a heart, man, but you're just biting everybody. So you know what he does? He goes to the fucking store, and then he comes back home, and he sits down in front of his Smith Corona typewriter from the 1950s and he says, I'm gonna fucking sit here and I'm not going anywhere until I finish the greatest script of all fucking time, right? Because he loves to write movies about bank robberies, man. Fucking the greatest fucking heist film of all time, all right? So this dude sits down and he says, I'm not leaving till it's done. But then he forgets, he forgot that he forgot to get coffee at the fucking supermarket. So you know what he does? He gets out and he goes in the fucking elevator and he's on his way to the super mechanic and that's when he sees Penelope, the hot, beautiful Australian from 2B or not 2B. And she's just standing there in the elevator, smoking fucking hot, huge tits, fat ass, perfect fucking face, man. And she's holding this box, man. And then, and then Christopher Clementine, that's the main character's name. He goes, what's in the box? And she freaks out. And, he, and she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And he's like, what's... What's in the box? She's like, what? He's like, Brad Pitt, what's in the box? And she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And he's like, seven? Brad Pitt. And she goes, oh my God, I love Brad Pitt. And he goes, I know, right? Mind you, he would never talk to this chick before. He doesn't even know where he conjured fucking the self-esteem and the motivation to do it. But he left an impression. So he goes to the fucking super mechanic and he comes back. And who does he see? He sees Penelope. And he finds out that she loves film. And she came all the way from fucking Australia to be the biggest movie producer in the fucking universe, man. So it's like, it's like these, you, it's like planets collided, man. And they fucking start talking every day. And he can't believe it because she's still smoking hot and her ass is fucking gigantic, right? But it's not about that. It's also about emotion. And they fall in love, man. They fall in love over the love of fucking film, bro. And he's like, I want to make this fucking great heist movie, but I can't. And she's like, yes, you can. And Clementine's like, how, Penelope? And Penelope's like, well, I fucking work in his office, so we're going to find a time for you to stroll right in that motherfucker. So they figure it out. It's fucking D-Day, man. He opens the fucking elevator doors. He gets up there, and he sneaks into Danny Weinstein's office. Danny Weinstein's immediately like, oh, it's you again? Get the fuck out of here. And he's back to square one. So he's talking to Penelope, he's like, I just want to make the greatest bank robbery movie of all time. How do we do it? You sexy ass motherfucking gorgeous woman. And Penelope goes, I don't know, man. Maybe we got to do it ourselves. And he says, fuck that. Finds out his address. He goes to Malibu to see Danny Weinstein. There's a thousand bitches on the beach. Everyone's doing cocaine. Weinstein's robe is open. Fucking small dick going all over the place. Fucking crazy. Up and around and shit. And he sees, he sees Christopher Clementine. He sees the protagonist of this fucking story. And he's like, what are you doing here? And he grabs a 357 Magnum and puts it to the fucking temple of our protagonist. And he says, if you don't get out of here, I'm going to fucking kill you. And he says, you know what, man? I'm already dead if I don't make this fucking movie, bro. And he goes, are you serious? You're willing to take a bullet over this stupid script? And Clementine says, yeah, man. I don't got nothing to lose, man. And for whatever reason, Danny Weinstein likes this shit. His fucking robe fucking flowing in the breeze of the wind, man. Coke on his nostrils like fucking Neil Young. They had to edit that shit out in that one documentary, but that's that's not that's not time or place right now. So you know what he does? 
He says, I'm gonna give you a shot. Weinstein says, I'm gonna give you a fucking chance, all right? I'm gonna read your pussy, fucked up, terrible ass script for some stupid ass heist movie, and you come see me on Monday, and that's it, okay? Is that it? Even if I hate it, you're gonna leave me alone. And Clementine goes, fuck yeah, man, I'll see you on the other side. So Monday rolls around, right? Clementine goes back, he's in the office. And you know what Weinstein says? He can't fucking believe it, man! Weinstein says, this has got to be the greatest, biggest piece of shit I've ever read in my life! Get the fuck out of my office, man. You gotta write from the heart. You gotta write something that's yours. You gotta write something that you need. Base it on your own life, you fucking asshole! Security kicks him out. He blows Penelope a kiss on his way being fucking jetted through the doors. He heads home and he says, you know what? We're gonna do it our way, man. We gotta find some way. But he just can't feel it, so Penelope's like, why not fucking use our own money? And he's like, are you kidding? This is gonna cost at least six million dollars. So he starts seeing private investors. Foreign investment. They shoot him down, everyone shoots him down, but his old lady, man, she believes in him. Because it's to be. So what happens after this? This sick fuck, Clementine, gets the idea to rob a bank to fund his movie about bank heists. Genius! Fucking genius! So he's doing all this like back and forth, right? He's fucking figuring everything out. How to rob the bank, the ins and outs, who works where, the fucking manager of the bank, how many kids he's got, how many fucking security guards there are, how to get out of there through the fucking sewer line, man. He's figuring it all out, man. So he plots the day. He's even got his girl, Penelope. And he's like, listen, I, I, I want you to help me write this scene. He tells her it's just for a scene, but what he's really doing is he's doing fucking reconnaissance to blow this bitch's fucking roof off and pay for this movie, man. So he's like, all right, we're gonna go into this bank, okay? Um, we're gonna need nicknames. How about Bonnie and Clyde? Penelope goes, okay, cool, I'm Clyde. Clementine goes, what are you talking about? You're Bonnie. And she says, motherfucker, it's 1995. A woman can be whatever she wants. And he says, okay, I guess, but like, fuck that. So they play rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Guess who loses? Bonnie! I mean, Clementine. So anyway, they're staking this fucking place out, man. It's amazing. He's got all the ins and outs. He knows what he's got to do. He picks the fucking day. Now he tells his old lady, he says, listen, this shit right here, okay? I, I, I gotta write all day. You gotta leave me alone. But she doesn't know. He's getting fucking guns. He's spending the last of his money on black fucking clothing. The day comes. He's in an alleyway. Puts his fucking ski mask over his face. Grabs his gun. Gets ready to open up the doors. It's 9 a.m. There's nobody there. But unbeknownst to him, there's an unmarked fucking van with four other guys in it and they're like yo that's our guy what the fuck why is he so late why is he going clementine kicks the door open and just before he can say it four other guys burst in and say this is a fucking bank robbery clementine walks to the corner and says holy shit somebody's robbing the fucking bank man one of the guys looks at him and says yeah we are dumbass let's fucking go we got 90 seconds. So this number one guy, right? They call him the king. Number one punches the teller in the face. It's just a skinny blonde bitch. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? And then he looks over at Clementine, our main man, and he says, Bellboy, do your job. And Clementine's like, Bellboy, what the fuck are you talking about? So number three says, Bellboy, man the door. Because everyone's got cool fucking nicknames. So he's looking at the door, he's freaking out, man. He thinks he's gonna fucking die. And what are we here? We are the fucking cops, bro. It's been 60 seconds, and the cops are already on their way. And number one, the king, he knows this shit doesn't make any fucking sense, man. He knows it doesn't make any sense, man. So you know what they do? They grab as much fucking money as they can. They throw them in black duffel bags. They jump in that motherfucking van, and they haul off, man. They got Uzis. They got MP5s. They got fucking all the works, and they're blowing cops to bits. Man, there's fucking bodies everywhere! They're rooming, they're zooming, they're fucking making it back to this warehouse, and they do. And it's crazy, man! And the king, number one, he's 
like, yo, this is bullshit. One of you isn't who you says you fucking is, bro. And he takes his gun out and he points it at Clementine's fucking head. And Clementine's just thinking about the movies he loves, man. He's thinking about the movies, man. He's thinking about his lady, man. He's thinking about his fucking dreams. And then number one, the king, he pulls the trigger and blows the fucking brains out of the guy standing right next to Clementine, dude. Because it turns out he's a cop. And the reason that number one, the king, knew he was a cop is because he was the only motherfucker on radios, man. That's why they call him radio. A little cliche, maybe I'll change that in the next draft. But either way, man, he's sitting there dead. Because there's no fucking way that the cop should have been showing up before 90 seconds was over. So he divvies the money. Everyone gets a piece. They can't fucking believe it. It's amazing. Clementine takes his shit and leaves. Now the reason all this worked out is because none of these guys ever knew who the other person was because they were all hired by one man, one main fucking man who hired each and every single individual who was a professional in their own right. So nobody knew who was who. But we just know that number one, the king, knew that radio was a fucking rat. He was a pig. So Clement Hine, he goes home, he empties this fucking, this bag full of millions and millions of dollars all over his Smith Corona typewriter, and he can't believe it, he's just looking at it, freaking out, man, and just as he's about to pass out, he realizes he's got to write a whole fucking scene, I mean, that's the whole reason Penelope was Clyde and he was Bonnie, she doesn't know that he was actually out there fucking committing a crime, robbing a bank to fund this fucking heist movie, so he does it, and he ends up telling her that he actually found foreign investment, a couple months pass by, they're there man, pre-production, this fucking movie's getting made bro, they're on scene, they're doing rehearsal, our writer and director, numero fucking uno, he yells cut and everyone claps man, Everyone claps, and they clap, and they clap, but there's one lone man clapping, and who is it? The fucking king, number one. And he says, so this is what you've been doing with all my money. Penelope's confused, man. Clementine's freaking out, man. So he takes him into a production trailer, and he's like, yo, what the fuck are you doing here, bro? He goes, what do you think I'm doing here? He goes, I don't know, man. You gotta leave me alone. What the hell's going on? He goes, I need you for another heist. And he goes, what do you mean you need me for another heist? I mean, who... Wasn't there some guy who hired everyone? And he goes, you fucking idiot, I am the guy. But you just checked out. No breeze, nothing. I found out what you were doing. And I'm on to something bigger. And I need your fucking help. And he says, no way, man, I'm out. I'm out. And King says, well, I'll fucking murder you then. I will kill you. I will end your life if you don't help me with this. And he says, I don't give a shit. And he goes, after I kill you, I'm gonna kill your old lady, man. And right then, Penelope walks in and she says, okay, who the fuck is this? And Clementine, our smooth young man, he says, oh, this is, uh, this is the investor I told you about. And she says, I thought she said he was foreign. And Clementine goes, uh, yeah, he's Canadian. She gives him some kind of like fucking cross eye. And he's like, listen, sweetheart, I just got to finish this up. I'll meet you out there in a second. She says, all right. So the king hands him an envelope and says, you got to help me do this heist. If you don't fucking do this, you're dead. You're all dead. Everyone's dead. So now he's fucking freaking out. He goes to dinner that night with Penelope, right? He orders a shrimp. She orders some steak. They have a little bit of lobster. But he's not eating. He's fucking weird. And she knows that he's weird, man. Why? How? Because they're fucking in love. It's a women's intuition, baby. So she's like, what the fuck is going on? And he's like, he just breaks down, man. He tells her everything. He tells her everything that happened. And she's, she can't fucking believe it, dog. She's distraught, bro. She's in the middle of this fucking restaurant. Like, you son of a bitch. You, are you serious? Are you fucking serious right now? All this shit you're telling me and you didn't cut me in on it. And at this moment, he's so in love. You motherfucker, she says. I'm down to rob banks. It's 1995. A woman can do whatever she wants to do. So he's freaking out because he doesn't know how to, how to do this job that the king wants him to do. So she looks at the envelope and she maps it all out, man. She maps it all out. And the next day, they both meet the king at the diner that they love to visit so frequently. He says, what the fuck is she doing here? 
Clementine says, look man, she can make this happen. He goes, no, she can't. And then she proves him wrong. So now Penelope's in, the King's in, Clementine's in, and the take is over $20 million. And guess who the target is? <laughs> well, if it isn't Mr. fucking David Weinstein, cunt, bitch, fucking asshole. So they figure out a way to get in because Penelope knows the ins and outs of this man's life. Plus he tried to fuck her once. So she's got a real vendetta against him. Now long story short, man, they plan everything out, right? And the way that they get into this guy's house to steal a reel of film that is worth millions and millions and millions of dollars is they set up a high scene to be filmed on his street. Now, Penelope looks to Clementine and she says, you know once he gets what he wants, he's gonna kill us both, right? Clem says, yeah. Yeah, baby, I know. She says that means we gotta kill him first. After the take. So they set shit up, man. And they go in this fucker's house, dude. Long story short, Danny Weinstein gets his balls blown off by a fucking Benelli 12 gauge shotgun. Cop sirens are everywhere. They're fucking running. They're running after the king because he's trying to take it. He almost shoots fucking Clem, but he clips Penelope in her shoulder, man. She's fucking bleeding, man. And she says, go get him. Go get that motherfucker. And she kisses him. She kisses this motherfucker. It's like Spider-Man, dude. Like when he was upside down, and he's kissing fucking Mary Jane, man. He's running after the king. They're shooting. They're busting in this fucking complex. But he can't find King. And he runs outside with a fucking automatic rifle. And right in front of him are two cops. And they stare at him. And Clementine doesn't know what to do. He's sitting there with a fucking automatic rifle, brother. And the cops look at him. Both hands on their fucking guns, pigs. And they say, hey dude, the production trailer's over there. And Clementine fucking forgot the whole time he's on a movie set anyway. So he goes to hunt King down and well, what happens? But well, well, I haven't figured. I don't. I haven't figured the end. I still gotta write. The, I gotta write the rest of it.